Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled City Council meeting. The meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll call. Mike Bruno. Here. Tara Burkhardt. Here. Don Cummings. Here. Becky Ruby. Here. Ian Kilberg. Here. Maladra. Here. Richard Marks. Here. Gene McGowan. Here. Jim Radecki. Here. Robert Swanson. Here. We begin tonight's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would kindly ask uh, our new best friend, Joe Sizod, to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Now, our first order of business, ladies and gentlemen, is to present Tri-City Family Services with a 50th anniversary proclamation. I'd like to invite the executive director to the podium, and by all means, introduce your guests as well. Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Poss. I'm the executive director at Tri-City Family Services, and this is one of our board members, Jeff Howell, Hello. and his lovely daughter, Emily, <laughs> has joined us, too. <laughs> And you've been on board since April. No, Me? I've been on board since April. He's been right. around. I've for been on the board you, for about three years now. You've yeah. been there a while. So you said you said so long to the old executive director, and you welcomed Laura aboard. That's right, exactly. And, and what right. timing? 50th anniversary. Great time for us. Yeah, it's a good time for the for the organization. We do a lot of great work in the community between no question. Batavia, St. Charles, and, and Geneva, and are really proud to be a member of it. So, yeah, That's good fantastic. to be here. That's fantastic. We're, we're, we're proud you're here. And you have a big event coming up next Monday. That's right. Yes, we have a golf outing on Monday, and somebody in your presence will be helping host. Yeah. So thank you, Mayor Burns. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. With Geneva resident Scott McKay. Yes. That's right. He doesn't, he doesn't golf, though, does he? I'm not sure. I don't oh, think so. Yeah. That's That's for safety reasons. In there, right? oh, that's exciting. So what else is new and exciting at TCFS? Well, for those of you that aren't familiar with Tri-City Family Services, we're a counseling agency, so we provide counseling in the Tri-City area for all income ranges. Um, we accept Medicaid and sliding scale. That's one of the important features of our agency is that we have a sliding scale so no one is ever turned away from mental health services. And we have a new eating disorder program for children and adolescents that has um, become very popular in the entire um, Midwest area. We're getting people from outside of our area, from Wisconsin, um, we get calls from Mayo Clinic, so that's kind of our newest program that we're very proud of. And again, we offer that on a sliding scale, which is sort of unheard of for um, family-based eating disorder treatment. That's wonderful. Are there any comments or questions from the dais? I know most of you are very familiar with Tri-City Family Services. The proclamation I have before me, apparently I had the honor of signing it the first. Wow. Mm. Yes. There are actually four signatures to this. It's uh, our friends Ray Regina of St. Charles, Jeff Schilke of Batavia, and Richard Irvin of Aurora. So we're all going to be so proclaiming. And then there'll be an original certificate with all four signatures. Are all four, are all the other three going to be at the event on Monday? Do you know? I do not know. I don't think so. I think we have, Excellent. I think, right, exactly. <laughs> there you go, right. I think we have 50% participation, including yourself. So well, yes. <laughs> I have to guess the other the other one. Right. Yeah, you, you got to guess, guess who the right. other one is. Yeah. He's probably a member for God's sake. <laughs> well, we're proud of what you did. And we're particularly proud that you called Geneva home. Thank you. We, we are, are too. An extraordinary five decades. So we're very, know. very pleased to serve Geneva residents. Mm -hmm. Well, all of you have a copy of the proclamation in your packet. Do I hear a motion to so proclaim? So moved. Second. Alderman Radecki makes the motion. Alderman Marks makes the second. A voice vote is sufficient. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please say aye. Wonderful. May I present the steel, Laura? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank it's you. our honor to be here tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you so your time. Thank, Thank you, Mayor Thank Burns. you, everyone. Good night, guys.
Gracias. Item 3B is to introduce Fleet Maintenance Supervisor Joe Sizon, the gentleman of the Lettuce and the Pledge of Allegiance. Joe, come on up. Joe is celebrating one week. Uh, one week anniversary. One week anniversary of the city of Geneva. Your hobbies are musky fishing and golf. Try to, yeah. In that order or? No. No? Doesn't matter. Do you have a handicap you're willing to share? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You worked for West Dundee for five years. Yes. As a fleet supervisor. Brickman for nine years as shop foreman. <clears throat> and USF Holland, 10 years as a journeyman and technician. I know you have a wife and young son at home. I had the honor of seeing your son's picture. He's now six years old. You adopted this young man at age six months. Yes. Share with the council and the community tuning in where your son called home. Ethiopia. Uh, we went there twice. Um, he was really cute, and now uh, he's six. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> and his name is Jaden yes. Nahom. Yes. And Nahom was his birth name. Yes. What, what does Nahom stand for? It's a biblical figure. Is that right? Like I said before, we Googled it, and we couldn't really come down with anything that matched anything else, so we don't really know. <laughs> Biblical figure of some sort. I like it. Has he learned how to spell his last name yet? At times he does. Is it, I, yeah, have I think you it, learned how to spell your last name? That's not really, no. And what nationality is Saison? Polish. Interesting. So back to this musky fishing. Yes. Where do you catch musky? Where? Yeah. Anywhere. There's musky. Um, I catch in northern Wisconsin. Michigan, Boulder Canada. Junction? Boulder Junction, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Do you have your own boat? Yes. You do? The biggest muskie to date is 49 and a half inches, 38 pounds. And you're allowed to keep those? It's not catch and release? No, you can keep them over a certain side limit, but most people let them go. It's more of a sport, sport fishing. Got it. And has Jaden been with you fishing? Yes. Not musky fishing, though. Not musky fishing. He caught a five and a half pound smallmouth this year. Five a years what? old. So what kind of fish? Smallmouth. Oh, smallmouth. <laughs> but it was I think I caught my first five pounder when I was like twenty. So at five he was doing pretty pretty well. That's good living. Yeah. And you have a great team you're working with at the public works department? Yes. That's exciting. I think so. Yeah. Well it's only a week in, right? Well, six months. Six you're gonna reserve comment till six months yes. anniversary? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So how's the fleet overall? Uh, it, needs, it needs me, <laughs> but it's all, it's all right. Yeah. yeah. So we've heard. <laughs> It'll get better. Any questions or comments from the council? I didn't, I didn't ask Joe where he lives. A little bit north of here. McHenry? Ooh. See, everyone says hey, ooh. ooh. See, uh, they all said ooh. It's like the fifth one I've had. I know. <laughs> so how do, you come, how do you come down to Geneva? Uh, Randall Road. You do could yeah. Randall the whole way? Yeah, I tried a couple different ways, but that seems to be the best, time-wise. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're delighted to have you. I'm happy to be here. And welcome aboard. Thank you. Be safe, have fun, do good. I will. And tune in to the rebroadcast and make sure Jaden watches this. All right. Okay. I'll be sleeping now, but I'll okay. tell him. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, sir. You. Welcome. I like that. It needs me. That's the best answer. <laughs> Item four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments from anyone on the dais? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine and can be considered and acted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Alderman Marks makes the motion. Alderman Bruno makes the second. Questions or comments regarding the omnibus agenda? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Ian Kilberg. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Item five passes unanimously. We skip to item number 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to please read the bills in their aggregate 
for our consideration. Bills for payment total, one million one hundred twenty-seven thousand one hundred and six dollars and twenty-eight cents. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet on the city website. Motion by Alderman Bruno to pay the bills as presented and available on our packet and on the city's website. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Ruby. Any questions or comments regarding the bills as presented? Hearing none, seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Mike Bruno. Aye. Mayor Barkhart. Aye. Don Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Dean Kilberg. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Item number 10 passes unanimously. We skip to Committee of the Whole Items of Business. Item 11A is to recommend resolution number 2017-88, authorizing acceptance of a proposal from Thomas P. Miller and Associates in an amount not to exceed $22,170 for public engagement services for the strategic plan project. Is there a motion? So moved. Bruno makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Maladra. Questions or comments regarding item 11A? Alderman Swanson. Uh, I opposed this uh, recommendation uh, for the reason that I think uh, it, it's not money well spent and we could do it in-house. I think uh, we as a a group have made a good case that we have a revenue problem and will need to go after future revenue streams. And I think in order to do so, we also have to take a hard look at expenses. And I see this as a discretionary expense that uh, we could eliminate. So for that reason, uh, I would vote against this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in the dais? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. <clears throat> Uh, Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Nay. Gene McGowan. Aye. Jim Radecki. Nay. Robert Swanson. Nay. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhart. Aye. Don Cummings. Nay. Becky Ruby. Aye. Dean Kilburn. Mr. Clark, would you kindly read the tally of that vote on item 11A? That's six yeas and four nays. Six yeas and four nays? Correct. Motion passes. We skip two. According to my scorecard, number 13, new business. I know we have a guest with us this evening regarding some new business. So, <coughs> Terry? Hello, many of you know me. I'm Terry Emma, the director of the Geneva History Museum. And thank you for having me here tonight. My main reason for coming is to promote our new event, not new event, our third year of our annual fundraiser, Barbecue at the Museum. It's next Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. in the, um, under a canopy next to our building in that empty lot. And the canopy is um, underwritten by U.S. Bank Geneva Branch, so we thank them. But I invite you to join us. This is our annual fundraiser, and the Geneva History Museum is the only place that preserves Geneva's story. So all that you're doing here today is still being collected by the museum. We don't just preserve stuff from the 1800s and the early 1900s. We're continuing to collect Geneva's story. So you guys are part of history tonight and the museum appreciates that. Please join us. A special thank you to the city and the mayor for approving our special event and the liquor license to help us have some more fun. Thank you. So I invite you to spend a fun evening under a canopy lit next to the museum uh, with food, cash bar, featuring beer from Stockholm's Brew Pub, wine from Patton House, and cocktails from Fox River Distilling. The event offers silent and live auctions with unique Geneva items and experiences, such as a private dinner party for 12 at the museum. So it's your own night at the museum with 11 of your favorite friends. And then we'll also give you a private behind the scenes tour of our collection and archives. So you've got the museum to yourself for one evening. That's one of our auction items. 
We also offer a historic pub crawl van tour for 13 people, which is kind of an odd number, but you can make it work. Uh, we'll take you through town, tell you stories of previous saloons that have been in town. There used to be one right behind City Hall called the White Horse Inn. Uh, we'll tell you stories of current places, and then we'll also drop you off at your favorite place and give you a free appetizer, and uh, then you can enjoy your friends and have some drinks. You can also win reproductions of images from our archives, including maps and illustrations from Geneva artists. The city has also generously donated a um, ride home from school in a fire truck and a cool ride to school, including breakfast with the mayor, so thank you. You could be a lucky winner of one of our Geneva restaurant gift cards throughout the evening, just for bidding on an auction item. So that's all you have to do, you don't have to pay. If you bid on auction items, you can be entered into a raffle and win these great prizes from Geneva restaurants. The highlight of the evening is the 10-foot screen and 52-inch uh, displays that we have up with rare digitized film reels in our archives of Memorial Day parades, the original Geneva community swimming pool, that I remember swimming in, it's kind of gross. But John F. Kennedy's visit to Geneva in 1960, we actually found rare footage of that in our archives. Um, snippets of fun and memorable Geneva stories recorded by the museum, including Geneva's former police chiefs, fire chief, aldermen, and mayors. So we're, we're preserving stories from the past, and oral histories are the best way. I, I could tell you stories that they've told us, but to hear it firsthand, there's nothing like it. So we show those throughout the evening. The museum is fortunate to also have Scott McKay of 95.9 The River as our MC and auctioneer. He brings a lot of fun to the evening and always uh, makes it a good time. There are still a few spots left if you'd like to join us. I'm gonna hand out some invitations. Uh, many of you are already coming, which I appreciate. Uh, it's $60 per person and $50 if you're a member of the museum. It includes dinner, lemonade, and iced tea with a cash bar and you get to bring home a Geneva drinking glass of your own that we are going to give you as a gift. As pointed out earlier, the museum is a 501c3 organization. We are not funded by tax dollars. A lot of people assume Batavia and St. Charles are both supported by tax dollars. Geneva is very unique. We're actually one of the only area museums that are independent, totally independent, and we appreciate that and we work with it it can be scary at times, but uh, we also know that the city does support us in all that we do in our events, and we appreciate that. I want you to know why you should support this. Why, why come to this fundraiser? Why be a member? What does the museum do? We're on 3rd Street. It looks like we're a, a storefront. We're not a, we, we have a gift shop, but that's not all we have. The museum was founded in 1943 by volunteers that saw a need to preserve Geneva's story and we are so grateful for that. They started collecting, they didn't have a museum, they used their own homes to store all these items until they could fund a museum in 1964 in Wheeler Park, which is now the Geneva Senior Center. We built that building, added on twice, outgrew it, no one knew we were ever there, we were only open two days a week and all based with volunteers. So they did a capital campaign in the late 90s and raised enough money to purchase the museum on 3rd Street, which was Chicago title. We're so fortunate that those people uh, brought us where we are today because now we are a vibrant, active museum, open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 4, attracting visitors, attracting Geneva residents, and we are offering so many more things than we could have done before. So we have over 10,000 visitors a year, and that's just an estimation because that's all we can do is people walk in the door. Uh, but 85% of our visitors are not from Geneva. Our supporters are Geneva people, but the people who come to the museum are tourists. So we are attracting tourists into the museum. We attract visitors with exhibitions created by the museum, and we host nationally traveling exhibits and children's exhi exhibits now each summer. We spend a lot of time researching, developing, and building our own exhibits. Today, or right now, we have uh, Inside and Out, Geneva's Faces, Places, and Spaces. It's on Geneva's architecture, including Geneva's finest builders, the Wilson Brothers, who built this fabulous city hall. So please come and visit. That's open through no November 4th. Our children's exhibit this year was Building Geneva, which, which is a hands-on gallery for children to learn about architecture, building, and design. 
We entertain the community with programs, offering monthly brown bags, exhibition programs, and tours. Uh, last year, we started Geneva on Wheels. It's a monthly, regular scheduled tour in a van, uh, which we have 13 people join us and we take a 45 minute drive around Geneva. We have different routes, like I think we have four different routes where you can come back and take an east side tour, a south side tour, historic tour, pub crawl tour, and then it ends at Little Traveler, and Little Traveler sponsors a lunch for the participants. Those participants also get a goodie bag at the end. So now we're bringing in businesses to sponsor the museum and if they become a corporate sponsor, their coupon goes into the goodie bag. So these visitors coming from all over are now getting a reason to stay in Geneva for the rest of the day, shop, have lunch, and enjoy. We uh, also do trolley tours during the Swedish days, and every year we do a different route. And we do hop-on tours, so people can bring their own bus in. We have people coming from Hinsdale, Naperville, all over the you know, local area, bringing in their own van, and we hop on for a lower rate and give them a tour. And they want to stay and they want to shop, which is a fabulous partnership with the downtown businesses. We provide research for individuals on properties, genealogy, business, special interests on Geneva's history. We've developed a close, close relationship with the city with the historic preservation planner and provide information to assist projects, including most recently a home on Dow Avenue that you guys also voted on for landmark status. We also work with realtors to promote historic properties and have worked with many Geneva businesses in naming their business, merchandising their, uh, their items, and marketing in line with Geneva history. Fox River Distilling is the perfect example. They name all of their um, new bottles after Geneva and they come to us to research certain names and how to uh, make it relevant. Bronze plaques that you see throughout town are given by us. Uh, property owners contact us to research the history of their building or home, and with board approval, the museum awards a plaque that serves as recognition. This year, we awarded four plaques, including our museum. We were like the, shoe, the shoemaker whose kids had bad, no shoes. We're thinking, why haven't we plaqued our own museum? It dates back to 1907. So that plaque is currently inside of our building for our exhibit, but will be put on the outside of our building uh, when that exhibit closes in, no in, in November. Since 1940s, we, more than 120 Geneva buildings have received a bronze plaque award. We educate Geneva students with field trips to the museum, visits to the classroom, and offer traveling trunks for teachers to use within their classroom. Retired teachers assist our educator. So it, again, it's bringing relevancy back and we, we communication back to uh, know what teachers are looking for. We continue to receive items for consideration to add to our collection, an average of one a week, which I thought was unbelievable, but it is true. Our room was full waiting to go into our collection. Just two weeks ago, we picked up four boxes of items from the former home of Geneva artist William Moulis and Geneva architect Walter Frazier. We found what appears to be a wedding photo of the Little Traveler founder, Kate Raftery, from 1906, along with letters she wrote to her future husband, Edmund, while they were dating in the uh, early 1890s. This was such a rare find, the homeowner didn't even know what was in the boxes. We conduct video interviews to capture stories from Geneva residents and business owners. These videos are used in programs, exhibitions, and are precious first person person accounts of events and memories. Last year, we honored more than 70 volunteers for more than 3,000 hours that they provided for us. Recently, we were awarded a conservation grant that provided an all-day visit by a professional conservationist and an architect to evaluate our museum and our building. Their final report included these comments. The museum's collection is a jewel for local historians and compromises and, and uh, sorry, yeah, uh, consists of many of one-of-a-kind artifacts, and it has done an excellent job in maintaining the building to high standards. The museum was also listed this year as one of the best museums in the suburbs by the Daily Herald, and one of the best area museums by West Suburban Living Magazine. With a recent fundraising campaign from community supporters, we are now in the process of updating our audiovisual system in our meeting room with state-of-the-art technology
that will have the ability to video conference in museum members from wherever they are. If we have a homebound member or we have someone who goes off to Arizona or Florida in the winter, they can still attend our brown bag programs. This is all thanks to one of our board members, Gary Hedge. Gary has gone throughout the community. Uh, we don't have the funds to do this and just you know write a check for this, but Gary went out and got the money to do this great audiovisual um, upgrade. And it's going to take the museum outside of our walls. And the uh, possibilities of this project are endless. Another component of it is that I can take this 50-inch screen with a camera out to Greenfields, for instance. It's all mobile. And I can record people in one day while I'm there. I don't have to hire anybody. I don't have to you know, make sure I can coordinate calendars. I can sit there all day or have a volunteer sit there all day with this system and record these stories before it's too late. So thanks to Gary, uh, this system is going to be implemented in the next few weeks. Um, it's going to be mobile, like I said, and uh, we'll be able to capture more stories. Our small staff of two full-time and three part-time, along with devoted board of directors and great volunteers, are working hard on our vision and goal to become the first nationally accredited museum in Kane County. And we're halfway there already. None of this would be possible without the support of our community. We hope you'll join us next Thursday and have fun at the barbecue, win some great auction items and prizes. And if you can't come, I just encourage you to become a member of the museum. For $50 for a household for a year, you get uh, unlimited admission to the museum, 10% discount in the gift shop, uh, reduced research fees, um, reduced program fees. Uh, it's, it, it's in your pocket the second that you, that you give it to us. And we're doing good things with your money. So I just want you to know that whether you're new, new to Geneva or you're a longtime resident, you're all part of Geneva's story. So the Geneva History Museum is the only place that is preserving these stories. And it takes a village to run this place. So I would appreciate your support, appreciate you uh, talking to the community about what we're doing. Uh, we're doing the best that we can with the small motion that we have to get our word out. Um, but I just want you to join us, and I appreciate those of you that are members already and donors, and uh, appreciate that you are part of the museum because this museum is telling your city's story. I would like to give you a goodie bag that I give to all of our people who come for our tours so that you can see the uh, partnerships that we're creating and growing within the community. I hope, I hope this goodie bag becomes too small in just a few months to even carry all the, the coupons and reasons for people to stay in Geneva when they come to the museum. I also invite you, there'll be, uh, my business card is inside of each of these bags. I invite you to call me, email me. I'd love to give you a personal tour of the museum, show you what we're doing, give you a behind the scenes. You would not believe the artifacts that our small museum has. Um, I'm very proud of it, as you can tell. And are there any questions? Alderman Bruno. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Terry. I'm glad you took the opportunity to, uh, to come and uh, uh, cover all that information. It's great having the museum in, in town. Uh, I will attest that the barbecue uh, is a wonderful event, uh, and, uh, and I will be there. I know you I, will. And I recommend everyone be. Well, I don't know how many tickets you have left, but jump on it. It's getting close. We are. It's because of the tent. It's a limited capacity. But um, So if you'd like to come, I encourage you to do it soon because... Tickets are selling pretty quick. But I know a lot of you have been there. Appreciate that. And I hope you had some fun. We always like to make it, you know, history is history. And I never liked it in high school. I can tell you that. It was not my favorite subject. Because every teacher just wants you to memorize dates and events. And it's just no fun. It's about the stories. Stories are what make history fun. And you can experience the same thing that you experience. But you're going to tell me different stories. And that's the great thing about this new audiovisual component that Gary has helped us raise funds for is, uh, you know, I, I don't have the equipment to go out. And people tell me stuff in the hall in the museum, and I'm like, we need to record that. And to watch Jamie Daniel up on this 10-foot screen next Thursday tell her story, it's cool. 
it brings it to life. So thank you for having me here. Thank you. And I know I told you more than about the barbecue, well, the but you give me a microphone and that's, that's sorry. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I have a four-year-old daughter, and she loved the display this summer. The children's um, display that you guys had was phenomenal, um, hands-on, interactive, and perfect, like, rainy day or just too hot to be outside, get away for a few hours, and completely entertained, um, had an absolute blast. And I think a lot of moms aren't aware of it, so I just want to put that plug out there. Please do. Every summer we hope to. We just started last year hosting children's exhibits. But um, this one we created ourselves. And it was a work, a, a, a work of love. It was phenomenal. You Thank guys you. did fantastic. Thank you. I cut most of the wood. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm known for drilling both hands. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it was a teamwork. And uh, re re retired teachers helped us develop some of those interactives and what are, you know, kids from three to ten looking for we wanted to try to meet a wide age range so yes. and thank you for sharing your video with oh, us oh you're welcome that was awesome we put it on facebook you can just oh check cool it out. i'll check it out <laughs> anyone else can i give you the goodie bag well, by all means Fourteenth next Thursday, so I need that week to to get ready. Yeah. <laughs> but we have some really cool auction items, and it's just fun—a fun evening under a lit canopy in the fall. Thank you. Anyone else with uh, new business? I do have a brief announcement to make, and that is a, a reminder to all who are tuning in, a reminder to the council members as well. This is kind of a piggyback on what uh, Ms. Emma said. There is an, another fundraising event coming up on the 23rd, and that's the 30th anniversary of the Geneva Academic Foundation event. Tickets are still available. Um, I believe the website is genevaacademicfoundation.org. Hop on there, purchase the tickets. It is... Uh, as all, speaking of history, as most of you know, the history of the Geneva Academic Foundation is such that just a few folks in town who started the foundation started it with their own monies, put up their own monies to help start this thing. So on the 23rd, it'll be a huge celebration. And obviously, uh, anyone and everyone who can not participate, we certainly encourage you to do so. So thank you. Anyone else about anything? We are betting St. Charles uh, on the football game this Friday that if they lose, we get to annex their community. So that should be exciting. Can we change yes, we can't change some. <laughs> Just the car. <card. laughs> yeah, that's true. And the car dealerships. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Mark, seconded by Kilberg. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned, ladies and gentlemen.